Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is talking just about Celtic Friday night special. Uh, drawing about obviously what's happened throughout the week, like the derby, tickets, stuff like that, and just international duty as well because it's obviously international duty. And tomorrow, guys, I will be heading to the Celtic women's game. So if you want to check that match, take a look at out tomorrow. So make stay, stay tuned to the channel. But I want to thank you guys for all the support in the channel. The support's been great. As always, wouldn't be doing the videos if, you, if I didn't have the support. So thanks for that, guys. But... Before we get into the the discussion of Friday night special of the let's just talk about Selk, you know what I mean? Uh, um, here comes the intro. Right, after the intro, let's talk about the first thing really of the week after so let's go back to monday night jesus friday it's been a quick week here. for some it might not be but for me it's quick um well um first thing first you know you go to monday night 10 maybe it's seven o'clock you're thinking because you know the thing was going to this derby nine days to go a week on sunday we're not away fans we will you still that we're trying to handle the euro uefa kind of sit uefa away fan situation where uh, if you've seen if you've seen it at Ibrox, it's like a 2.5k um it's like you've seen it if you uh, Dortmund you know Dortmund had that for the Dortmund match and you know what I mean so that, they were trying to negotiate that but you know Rangers just threw the body cried blah 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 because Celtic were going to give them that at Parkhead but alright um and it's just going to be 700 tickets um and Celtic have been handed them um for Ibrox and no more uh, and no more for the game on April in April the club have yet to say they do. In fact, they did. The other day, they did accept it. So this is the point where I was making. They, have, they, they, they did ask Rangers for the European allocation, 2.5k for Ibrox, and Rangers would get the same allocation return for the return fixture at Parkhead. Stuart Robertson, the specky, um, I can't say the word because we're on YouTube, um, has declined it. Celtic obviously will receive 700 tickets. Dortmund got 2.5k tickets, um, you know, picked below what would have got. Um, I'll try and show it guys, if I've got a pick I will put it up, um, I, I, I probably don't, but you'll, you'll see it guys anyway, do you know what I mean, um, and you know, Celtic get 7, get fans, 700, you know, what we have got, do you know what I mean, um, which is disappointing, but I think we have an update on the ticket situation maybe, uh, if we go, I'm trying to think, but yeah, I had it anyway, but the, yeah, that's it. John Hartson. We were talking about it. Yes, uh, I wouldn't talk John Hartson, but yeah. John Hartson put it perfectly right out the words out my mouth. I would literally say stuff the 700 tickets. I would stuff it. It should be 10,000 fans plus or nothing. If you're one of the 700, I would think oh, there are 30 fans who are missing out. We all know who started the slack of away fans. Nonsense. Rangers. Because. Uh, I, I, don't, I really. It's really. It, it's crazy. <laughs> It's honestly crazy that we can't have the original away fans. That's what make it happy. I know it was brilliant when we won three 0 at Celtic Park. Full full stadium of Celtic fans. But a derby, if you want that thing of the best derby in the UK or as we call it the best derby in the world, surely you've got to go away fans because that's what it makes about it. Away and home fan, home and away fans. That's it. Um, and it really. Um, it annoys me that and Celtic have accepted it and the people who if you remember guys the old firm back in 2020 which got cancelled postponed um, because obviously Covid started jeez that was back into um, um, was now it's people who got tickets for that will go to the, the game I wouldn't go no nope, don't pay don't don't get it I know there will be people going but I'd be like nah I'm not. I'm not getting Rangers money because they started this nonsense about away support. Um, they started the thing about the 800 fans. Honest to God, just because we were winning, we were, it the last couple of years we weren't hardly winning, but they still did that. I don't understand. Um, and then I don't get the fact that Rangers fans go to Parkhead and go, oh, the, the, the way where we where are we sitting the way and is a. Um, Visual, where there's a big thing in the way, you know what, if you're a wave fan at Celtic Park, but well, usually the same thing, you know, I was 800. If you, if you, if you didn't start the nonsense, we would have still had, you know, Rangers fans wouldn't have been, well, they complain of it, there's out, hey, but, um, 
they would have been able to see the match. That, that's the main fault. Fine. Say no, we only want 800 now. Blah, blah, blah. That's, that's it. But I know there will be people going to sell to, um, the real old firm next week um, and hope they really enjoy it. Rub it in the Rangers fans when we win. I'm not going to lie. Yep. Rub it right in. Because 700 tickets is nothing. But when I can remember the game very well, September 2019, under Neil Lennon, we won 2 0 up at Ibrooks. That was the last time we won at Ibrooks. But um, the, 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 we, made, we made that. We made the volume because Rangers fans couldn't sing that bit because they get beat 2 0. Um, they could be so brilliant. Hopefully, get the celebrations again because um, if we play this, just keep the mint going. You know what I mean, keep the way we're playing. If we play the way, I know Ross can at a different level, but just keep that pff, orange ball <laughs> um, going in next weekend. We'll talk a lot more about that, but yes, yeah, it is disappointing that you know we only get seven hundred. Christ, it was eight hundred last time. Jeez, we went, <laughs> we went down we've went to a hundred. What they can he afford a hundred seats now? Then is that? Um, but aye, um, yeah, that's the situation there. And, uh, it is disappointing because, as I said, I keep saying a derby makes uh, home and away fans. And it was great when Celtic had, you know, that full stand at Ibrox and when Rangers came to Celtic Park because they get the same allocation, um, which makes fair. But obviously, Rangers didn't think that. I don't know why, but hell. Um, but uh, we've got to talk about something good now. Oh, something good. I was Ke as Keogh was injured, but he's progressed back from injury. Uh, somebody, that, you know, on his injury, uh, I was out during the week. Now I'm very, I'm in very good condition. I feel that I'll be back very soon. Easter Rising, I'm telling you, I, I don't feel it'll be this next Sunday's old firm. Easter Rising, Easter Rising, Keogh, I'm telling you for the the, the Scottish Cup. Um, but that's interesting. But yeah, we're going to the point that um, somebody made on Instagram on Wednesday night. There, there's players, there's Celtic players now entering their final year, their deals this summer. A couple of them are be like, oh god. But uh, these are the players. So we've got James Forrest, who's 30, Chris Julian, 29, who's linking back from that long term injury. Tom Rogic, Nier Beton, who are both 30. So there's three 30 year olds and two 29s. And the question goes, would you renew any of these guys' contracts? Well, I, I would some of them. I wouldn't renew all of them, to be fair. I think James Forrest, I know people hate me for saying this, maybe, but I think that with the, you know, the people we've got now, I mean, yeah, he, he's alright when he comes on the last couple of games, but that's him, but he's nothing special anymore. I mean, he was great back when he had that great form, but I don't think that, I think that's past him. I really think that's due, but, um, so I would... Um, I would I wouldn't even know his contract to be fair I, I think that you know if I bad and stuff like that and even during the summer we could go and get another good young winger as well to just keep that back up there um, so I, I, he's like 30 as well do you know I mean he's getting that age where you know you'd be saying oh I mean it's like consistent you know can they can he be con consistent in his performance? I don't think he can. Yeah, it was great the other week there when we scored against Livingston. I think that was probably his best performance this season. Um, but I said I hope they kept it up, but I just don't think that it's going to happen for him. You know. But he's had a great career at Celtic, so fair play. Chris Julian, now, we signed him near Lennon in uh, 2019. Um, some memorable moments. Lazio, oh, so <laughs> Lazio, uh, Rangers and the Scott the Scottish Cup, the Betfred Cup final, Lazio, um, that great header I captured on my phone, that was probably the best goal in that year that I captured back then, 2019, Oof. um, and, you know, he's been a great player for us, um, you know, he's only came back from injury, that long-term injury back in 2020, so, uh, you know, we haven't seen a lot from since then, he's been really working hard in training, we saw, um, but, you know, the, the amount of players we do have, you know, the amount of the two great players we have, well, forgive you, the, the players we do have in centre-back role now is Carl Starfell, Carl Vickers and Stephen Welsh. Now, I think that, yeah, Julian would go over Stephen Welsh, but, listen, Starfell, I know he can make mistakes, but he's a fairly solid centre-back, and I think he's really improved, so is Carl Vickers, he's, oh my god, they've really improved this, the defence, by the way. Um, as I keep saying, I haven't seen that defence like, like that tight for so long. Um, they hardly make a mistake now, which is great compared to the start of the season. And I feel like they're 
they can rely on each other. You know, the passes, you know, it's great to see. And the goalkeeper as well, Joe Hart, um, it's great to see. And Carstuff, you know, it's, that's why Carstuff got called up for Sweden. I know he never played yet, but that's why he got called up. He's re he's been recognised as a great player. You know, he's, he's a solid centre-back, definitely a great defender now for Celtic. So is Carter, eh, eh, Carter Vickers. What player? I can't believe he didn't be called up um, for a USA yet. Under when he was at when he was at Celtic because he's a really great player. He that as I keep saying, he never gives up on the ball. He always keeps going for it, and he always some of the passes he makes is brilliant as well. Um, but it, it, I would, I would, and I wouldn't. It depends on. Uh, there's a big question if we do sign Chris uh, Carter Vickers on a permanent deal. If we do sign him on a permanent deal, it's kind of tricky to see where Julian would fit in. Now he's only. And that's the thing, because we can't wait till the summer, else you know Julian's official, you know, can go and free, can go. Um, he's twenty nine. I think that's still a good, it's still a good age for a defender. Um, he's, he's, you know, he's got that. Hopefully, if we do see him before the end of the season, that we, he said he's been proved through the training and the recovery process. But hopefully, um, that's the big question as to whether if we sign Carter Vickers or, in in the summer, permanently. That's it. Because if we don't. You know, you see, you can fit, you can fit him in there, but it's the big question is if you if you do sign him on permanent car because it's where you fit him in. That's it. But the final player, the final two players I want to talk about is Tom Rogic and Beaton. I will start with Beaton. <sighs> you know, he's been a club oof, uh, with a calm legend. Uh, Be I call him Beaton because he's been a Beaton. Oh my God, some of the some of these moments have been great. He's memorable couple of goals. Um, you know, some of the, you know, yeah, you know, the last couple of, when he came on midfield, he's kind of settled the team down with, with panic a bit and all that stuff in midfield, and he's done not too bad, but I feel that he's come at that age, the same as a bit like James Forrest, where, you know, it's the last of the, the, the servants, really, I know Cameron Gregor and all that stuff, but, you know, it's the last of the, you know, the, the players that have been there for so long, and he's 30 as well, so, I know Tom Rogers as well, but, I talk about him in a minute, but, I think that Beaton is. <laughs> I wouldn't mind if he stayed, but I think that it'd be hard for him to. I know if people get injuries, but like the players we've got now: Gucci, uh, really Tati, McGregor, Turnbull back now, um, Rogic, uh, why can I not think of anybody? Matt Riley, not. It's really hard to think that he can fit in there anymore. But it's up to Andrew at the end of the day. But for me, I don't think uh, along with James Forrest, I wouldn't think I would. Um, renew his contract in the summer. And the last person I want to talk about in the contract situation in the final year of the deal um, is Tom Rodgers. He's also 30, but I feel like Ange Postecoglou is vital, a lot like other players, has vitalised um, his career. Because we were talking in the summer, he was away to Qatar for so much money. I was like, well, it's a good deal, you know. Last season was there, you know. But he's really vitalised his career. I felt, as I keep saying the other day, that I feel like a, a 16, 17 Tom Rogic, you know, the goals he scored, the, the one against the United back in December, stuff like that. He's, he's feeling happy at Celtic, the way he's playing and that, his passes, he's not, you know, he's not um, unhappy to come on, he's really happy playing. I think it's just really the system Ange plays, just Ange himself probably, um, with a lot of other players as well that has vitalised their careers. Um, and I think, yeah, I'd definitely, be, definitely, uh, if I was, if I was Ange Postecoglou, I would definitely look into renewing his contract in the summer um, or before that obviously um, because Tom Rogic is the wizard boys the slippers on his feet my god the dribbles he can do he can still do that age of 30 he can still do that and the goals remember on Mullow back in February oh my god what a goal um, wizard was because he just skipped by shot <laughs> um, it's like there's literally glue stuck to his feet it's fantastic but um, I'll definitely try and renew his contract before it runs out but yeah um, that's about that. I want to talk about the young kind of thing, the Celtic news that came out this week. In fact, yesterday, in fact, we'll talk about yesterday's news first anyway. Um, and it was, um, it was brilliant news, in fact. It was very, he's very highly rated, youngster, pledging his future to Celtic. And Ange Postecoglou, um, Ben Dolt next, perhaps. Um, perhaps, um, and it goes, Celtic delighted as a statement it does that uh, has completed the signing of Daniel Kelly on his first professional contract. Daniel has joined in a three year contract. Everyone at the club wishes Daniel well and every success in the future with Celtic. That's great. 
and I think you know he talked about it when he's put up his post on Instagram. Right, he talks about you know, you know, basically saying as I said, pleasure and he switched it to Celtic and Ange. That's great. Want you in and stay focused in in the manager and Celtic. That's what you want, and he looks highly rated. He really does. I think I've heard about him before we signed him. Um, I think I do have news on the youngsters if I get it uh, up. Um, um, maybe not, but yeah. Oh, yeah, we go. Yeah, the youngsters. Yeah. So yeah, Daniel Kelly. Um, we got him in a three-year deal. Arsenal, Liverpool, and Benfica all had noted interest. However, it looked and it's done that Celtic got the, the man that's good because we've seen that before in the past where these young talented people have either left or nothing and it's like Celtic come on what a player that could have been for the future for Celtic and got more value um, but this guy we've got up we snatched him up good and another player Celtic are close to green is Mitchell Frame now he's he's close to the green a deal that would see the 16 year old um, commit his future to the club the left back attracted interest from the likes of Man City Crystal Palace and Newcastle United but has indicated his interest to stay so um, hopefully that gets done as well I haven't heard anything about that news getting done yet but hopefully see that done um, but that's yeah that done um, do you know what let's talk about international duty now um, first of all Maida I think this is great news I know maybe not for Maida because he would love to play see his team because he, his team Japan qualified for the World Cup congratulations but this is great news for Celtic um, J- Japan have, have qualified right uh, Dazen has played a full J League season and then came straight in the thick of a Celtic. The player now gets a break in time to recover at Lennox Town and be fresh for the Glasgow Derby because he pulled out of the World Cup qualifiers um, because of fitness wise. Because you can see why he's played a full J League season and then came right in the thick of it with Celtic. So um, it's good. It's good to see that he's the Lennox Town. He's getting released and get full up to speed for that Glasgow Derby next week and uh, for Australia it was bad news because the other week there, mon- uh, sorry Monday um, there was no Tom Rogic. Um he pulled I think cause of that injury I th- yeah that, that oh my god that injury against Ross County I think it's the ankle or something like that and said it could have been a lot worse but he's a doubt for the Glasgow Derby anyway and um, it was bad news for Australia because well they missed him because they, they're not going to the world I don't think the world um World Cup, but I want to move on to you know the derby next week um, and talk about the team news before we talk about re- in a, the rest of international duty. Oh, we need to talk about international duty. Why not? Um, I forgot about that. So both Cal McGregor last night and Greg Taylor started in Celtic's one-one draw with um, Poland. McGregor played seventy-seven minutes and Greg Taylor played sixty-seven. Thankfully none of them get injured. Rio Tate was an unused sub in Japan's 2-0 win over Australia. The result meant that Japan had qualified for the World Cup in Qatar. Starfelt was an unused sub in Sweden's 1-0 victory over the Czech Republic in the World Cup qualification semi-final. And then the under-21s, Leo Bada started in Israel's under-21s 2-2 draw against Poland in the Euro 2021 qualifiers. Under-21 qualifiers. And the badder scored this year's first goal. And what a goal it was. You better check it out if you haven't seen it already. What a goal. Top hand con. Top off. Top bins. Eh? What a goal from a bad. And he takes a brilliant year. I just want to point out a fun fact before we go into, um, you know, my kind of thing for the Glasgow Derby next week. I'll talk a lot about that next week. But um, I just want to talk about I want to talk about Edward. So it's like Edward left in August, right? But somehow... Edward and Ryan Kent have the same number of goals in the SPFL this season. Two. Right? One still plays in the Scottish League and now are left for the Premier League last August. Also playing 18 less games in the SPFL. <coughs> and Rangers fans call him the best league, uh, winger in the league. I don't think so. I don't think so. <sighs> Mad. That is just... <laughs> Uh, it's laughable, um, and as, um, but moving on to the Glasgow Derby. Assuming everyone stays fit and healthy, right? This is the team I would put out to play Rangers. I've got to win here, and our next game after that, after the biggest game of the season, probably. Draw, up, no doubt about that. Uh, Iranovic fireball, Karstorf felt 
Carter Vickers, Brick Walls, uh, Greg Taylor, well, oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, Matt O'Reilly, yep, definitely, Carl McGregor, oh, no, n- I don't need any to say that, Ray of Tati as well, probably what a midfield that is already, compared to, if you go back to the first Glasgow Derby of the season at Ibrox, oh my god, oh, Jota, J. Marcus Maida, now, I thought, you know, it would be differently if Keo was fit, but I definitely don't think Keo's fit, definitely not for this one. Um, but I'd have that line up because it's the strongest line we have. Um, you know, if you because Rogic's kind of out, you know, kind of the angle, so that's the strongest team we've got, and it's a really strong team. Compare that to oh, where did we go there? I don't know what I did there, but anyway, um, I don't know what I did there, but anyway, um, compare that to um, you know, the start of the season when we had. That team, you know, but like a debt for struggling injury wise, stuff like that, to now, that's a brilliant team. And I think people have the, you know, the, you know, the thought in mind that we could go to Highbrooks and do something. I know we've we done it at Park Keed. I know it's a full sell at Park, but still, I think we could do it. I think we could do damage to Highbrooks. Probably the, the biggest game of the season. If not, it is the biggest. Because I know we'll still stay top if we do lose, but if we do win. Listen, it's six points clear, and that's massive. I know three points clear right now is massive, but three po- six points is massive in this title race. Listen, nobody thought Angeboard scored last by Christmas, winning a title race, the top of the league. The players are saying they're fitting perfectly. A lot of thank Angeboard scored last year, you know, like that. The League Cup as well. <laughs> We're still in the Scottish in the, the title race. It's a superb. What a job this man's doing, Angeboard to call you. Nobody expected anything. Wrote them off right away. Look what he's done. Fantastic. I'm supposed to go. I'm going to leave it here, guys. I'll, I have to do something kind of a couple of minutes' time. But thanks guys for watching. Please subscribe and share the video as per usual. Thanks for all the support. Keep up, guys, in this video. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow for the match day vlog or the women's game. If you're, if you're interested in that, because it's obviously an international break, why not? Let's check it, check it out. And I'll be out tomorrow. Um, if you want to follow me on Instagram, so all links below. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for the match day vlog or the women's game. Um, and yeah, enjoy the weekend, guys, because it's. It's brilliant outside.